afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, master of propaganda, hero of psych, defender of the fatherland, widow of faith, and exciting one versus one on some mosque here in the south between Joe, we're fighting for the Soviet Union for the glory of Karmat Stalin and the 302nd Rifle Corps, holding up this scenic village as the Germans under the command here of Simon marches forward here for the course Deutschland Panzer TV Sean and we got Gart Motor counter attack and tank hunter here versus Simon's elite troops close air support and mechanized assault bullets into her infantry with a infantry Stug and Panzer 4 bullets in here bit of a mixed up all both though for our increased arm penetration not really the most effective bullets and he'd be better off I think going for increased experience bulletins than these two the Stug love, and the, I can't remember the one for the Panzer IV though. But double pioneers here, so obviously in this case Simon is aiming for grabbing a lot more territory initially. For Joe, it's of course the much more standard, just going for a bunch of conscripts. Obviously also opting to grab as lot of territory there as possible. But of course he doesn't have to make necessarily any sacrifice to do that. As such, and of course he doesn't have to build a starting building to get any sort of combat infantry out. But pioneers are rushing towards the village here while others sort of heading up here the side going for the fuel point grenadiers are following up here grenadiers for ready. Simon Sam has already been prepared by Joe just in case he already has sort of face fighting there think thinking ahead Good. and sensible we got a third constable there and we got Simon after the hot grenadiers court is getting an MG42 good work there good work there Seeing the first in game near Pani's spotting something there, of course, with an increased line of sight. Quick surprise the constant there, finding where we're denying the church to them before falling back here. Gonna just bring up to support the Punier. There we go, back and forth, back and forth. Game of cat and mouse if the cats and mouse had a gun. Almost got the northern fuel point there, but in that regard, we are seeing Spard here all leading on. He's also linked up Barb Wire here to make harassment towards his area a bit more difficult. Not bad, not bad. Pioneers falling back again. Might want to get the Canadians inside the church instead, maybe. Or he might be waiting for the MG42. No, the MG42 is actually sending up here to sort of guard this area and support the Pioneers there. Very interesting move there by Simon. He got the second Canadian squad there around. We got four countries here for Joe so far. Shots fired. And listening up there, we go cut to get into the building right before the grenadiers. Fort there secured, second grenadiers got there arriving. Pioneers, MG42 setting up there. Concert or engineers sneaking up there behind them, pioneers rushing down there, grenadiers basically there, fighting up the concert from beside their respective buildings. Pioneers spotting here for the MG42, allowing it to basically support them much more easily. In this case, the country will end up in a lot of trouble. Sadly, wooden barrels are not exactly known for their mighty defensive properties against an MG42. And there you go, Job is quick to pull back his country there. Though we've got another squad sneak up here behind. Could try and get behind the MG42 and surprise Simon that way. Fighting continues in the center. Right side, we've got some engineers holding up there, but that's about it, really. Second is squad there with the third one on the way there for Simon. No safe, for example. Additional MG 42s, but still, the way he's using this one is rather interesting. He's also keeping them close to the pioneers, so they don't get too much surprised. But in this case, though, that's going to happen nonetheless here. Joe's very solid flank, they're getting behind the MG 42, causing death at Frontier for Simon. Pioneers moving up there. I mean, with all the submachine guns there on these, he might have a slight chance of being there with the constant support, but it's going to be rather limited, to be honest. There goes he's in the building, MG 42 going to fall back. We got pioneers for the flamethrower that even the comes up the building, and they just bring up support here. Conscripts all going into the nine of fire, China to get case, sing out as the conscripts stand out in the bloody open. Pioneers continue to hold up the line there, and we've got Canadians have this flamethrower engineers. The flamethrower engineers have suffered rather heavily in this engagement, partly due to the heavy cover. Poor Sergei crawling around there amongst the reefs, the blood spilled from his own friend there. New mum got counterattack up here, Pioneers holding up the building, denying cover there to the Russians. And another Canadian might sort of deal with the country in this case rather. Awkward position, so three grenadiers, two pioneers, of course, one with flamethrower, one in before two here versus four country point engineer flamethrower. Further pushing up here, going for the cutoff point, very aggressive, very bold play there. Comes to the ultimate out forced away there. We got an additional grenade spot there, rank for Simon, even then. Further pushing down here, going for the few point, going to Knight Joe. That good, good. Aggressive play there, very aggressive play here from Simon. As soon as he sees an opportunity, he goes straight for it. And we got a sniper there, so he's going for rather heavier tier one there. Grenadiers, Pioneers, MG42, and a Sniper. Looks like he's going to try and lock down here the cutoff point. 
very aggressive play here from Simon. Very aggressive play. He's not just holding back. He's not just, you know, taking it easy. He's going all in. This is the spirit of Splitskrieg, or maybe not. There's certainly definitely some spirit behind it, though. Not to be taken lightly here. Of course, in this regard, he's realizing at this point he's being quickly locked down. And then we got a bunker up here. And this is either going to be a machine gun bunker or a command bank, but the Indy 2 certainly would make the most sense. So he's actually going to really lock down this area hard. This is very aggressive play, very aggressive play, and certainly rarely seen, you know. Once a mask, at least amongst all players at these levels, who tend to sort of be a summary guard, is surprisingly more conservative. We got Pont here being secure here, Fuel Pont being across the We got conscripts, engineers counter attacking, swiftly moving through the, the brown and gold in the fields. Gonna disengage, you got Pioneers flanking in, but the Pioneers themselves are in a pretty poor condition. There we go, wiped, a bit of a loss there for Simon. Might have pushed his lap a bit too far there, got punished. I don't think he's going to get a wipe in return. And as they're falling back, suffering some losses. Fuel point has been denied, though he wasn't able to connect it, so there won't be any fuel gain. And there we go, we got Machine Gun Bunker basically covering the cutoff point here. Absolutely audacious play there by Simon. Audacious also freeing up his MP42 elsewhere. And it's going to basically force a certain reaction here from Joe. He wants to deal with it at least. He's going to have to get up a support from company here. I mean, an M301 could in theory get past it. But of course, if just one gun is squad nearby, that could easily f well, fall flat. So a support from company is going to be the more likely option. Either a field gun or a mortar to try and deal with the bunkers. And we're going for an additional gun in this squad here for Simon. Going for a very, very heavy tier one there. I think he might be pushing a bit too far there, considering the overall advantage will build up. I think he should try and take up faster for something, you know, a bit higher tier. Panzer Grenadiers. Might actually try and rush for armor right here. Could be a better choice than going for full Grenadiers on top of everything else he has. Plus that bunker, I do think he might be banking a bit too much there. But we'll see. Mounting made down there by Jove. Contest moving up here pretty aggressively. Snob hanging about there. Grenadiers moving about. And there goes a Palmer Camp. Support weapon campania almost done here for Jove. And there you go, shots fired over here. MD42 stalling up things a bit. Engineers rushed away. Looks like Jove there briefly have forgotten about the machine gun bunker. And there you go, sort of trying to pick behind. In this case, they got caught there due to the other retreating units. Gets pinned it down, in fact. But I'm scared, Boris. Just get moving. I'll f I'll follow you later. Of course, one thing to keep in mind though is the machine gun bangers don't necessarily have the greatest line of sight. So theory he could try and creep past it. That's going to be a bit tricky. Okay. Comes with a bit of trouble. We got snipers, grenadiers, and you two just basically firing everything they got in that building. Constable there seem to have been utterly forgotten, paralyzed in fear, but mostly just forgotten. Take up there for Simon. Still a lot of infantry, a lot of troops. And there you go again, trying to push forwards. Getting stuck again here with the machine gun. Plus another gun, this sort of spot for it. This is going to be an even harder sort of m method for Joe to sort of push through. We've got a mortar here though. We've got a mortar rhyming, in which case you can have bombard it. We'll try to smoke it and then get past the machine gun bunk and then deal it with either the demo charge or flame throws. I mean, he's got options there, he's got options there. Of course, he'd also just call up field gun and then just hammer away at it from a safer distance. So, of course, I have to see ultimately though, what Joe decides to do. Oh, we've got counter attack here, we've got shock troops arriving. There's really preparing to try and push okay, through there. The Conscripts hanging back here, not quite eager to try and support the men in the building. Simply due to the machine gun there, the sniper there go. Force run past it all, straight into the gauntlet, into Simon's jaws, and he just tears them apart. And there we go, we got a smoke screen down, we got a smoke screen down here. We've got the gun this here, basically, sort of right beyond it. Vasily there, slaughtered by the Ravnir, because they themselves took a hit of the mortar, they've still nonetheless made it forward, we've got Monji, has got more country going up there, taking advantage of the smoke screen here, then another one might be needed, there we go, we've got another smoke screen down on the machine gun bunker, the assault continues, a nicely executed assault here by Joe, making right use of smoke there to leak the assault at the same time, we've got losses over here, then there's MD42 crew suffering there, but there you go, the assault continues to get the bunker, making use of the sand max here to burn away, and then got another engineer with a flame for there to attack from the side, in which case we bring it down quickly, for Simon, what is going on there? He's rushed straight for tier three, in which case the heavier tier one does make more sense. It does make more sense. Guys, Even then, I don't think he needs to go for that heavier tier one to make it work. But either way, that's the Palmer Court is going up, and Armor Rush will hit Joe in a few moments. And here's the thing: he's only got one thing to deal with it. So, of course, depending on what it is Simon gets, Joe could be in trouble, or he could be pretty safe. 
And before two, they're stalling the cards, which start from in fact quite completely. Meanwhile, the assault continues up here. Simon's force are being a bit outmaneuvered here by shock troopers, engineers, and whatnot. Moving through flame We've got the sniper here in a pretty dangerous situation. He needs to sort of find a safe path to escape in, otherwise, he could be cut down in short order. We got a few going there, rhyming for Joe. Quick grenade there against the. Oh, smoke grenade! He's probably in this case worried about the MD42, so in this regard, we see Joe basically thinking here, going, you know, I could either try and get them, but I'd like to get suppressed in the process, so instead, I'm going to ensure the MD42 can't suppress me, instead, do something else. So, rather sharp decision making there by Joe. At the same time, they got something again, pushing for the fuel point, trying to build up a fuel advantage, and thusly also an arm advantage. He's going for a flak panther, he's going for a flak panther, getting in the situation. I can see why. There's a lot of infantry and the miss. There might be a few field guns, in which case the flak panther couldn't theory, do a lot of damage. There we go. Let's get caught by the shock troops. We could see what there, and there we go. And it is white. So far, Simon has suffered the most wipes. He was Joe really hasn't in comparison. He suffered some damage, he suffered territory loss, but he's not had entire units destroyed. So that sector. took be a small chance here for Joe to sort of find some footing again here versus Simon's relentless attacks. There's about to get wiped out, they need to choose another door, there we go. But still going to have to creep right past the shock troops, that could be a second wipe here within the first, well in within actually a minute or two, and there we go. Two kind of air schools utterly annihilated. This is going to hurt Simon quite a bit, that's 480 manpower. Basically abruptly ended. So now we're going to, to bleed out and sort of keep Joe a bit contained here, but it's still rather risky there, in particular since there's only an MP42 to screen it. One good smoke unit, something could definitely cause some problems there. Flak Panzer there's around, of course, this could be Simon's sort of chance of really sort of, you know, turning things in his favour fully again. It arrives, and again, there's only a single fear gun to stop it. Thing is, though, Simon knows what it is, and he's already bleeding out there with the sniper. So there's a slight chance from Molten only here, the sort of area that's been set up on this, and uh, a lot of sort of range to sort of spot these Osman in. Also, the Osman has an easy time there getting past it. So there we go, the field gun has been dealt with already practically. I mean, there's a smart chance he can pull it off, but the problem is there's no Russian infantry about to support it, and there's a lot more Germans moving up too. And there we go, Sis 3 field gun has been cleared out. He's very much going to hurt Joe there and his chances. He's got, well, pretty much nothing to stop a flat panzer on a rampage through his territory right now. We've got troops that are hanging about. He's securing points. He's not sort of rushing into to try and deal with it. Panzer might try and carry up the field gun behind it. That's going to be a bit risky there. Two of the grenadiers and pioneers still there. Flak panzer moving into the base there. Almost got the hay mortar there. Almost. There we go. Kaput. Mechanized armor company being set up by Joe. A bit too late though. A bit too late. The flak panzer around. He spotted it. He spotted it. What's Joe going to do? Smoke grenade down to try and protect the crew, force him to attack round the gun, quickly fusing up targets, but there we go. Attacking again, he's killing the engineers, slowing down the production there, allowing him to quickly move in and sort of trying to wait for the smoke to dissipate or just disrupt the building. And there we go, forcing Joe to have to cancel it. Shark troopers, engineers, and a lot of trouble with the flag panther. We got Simon following up with a panther four. Meanwhile, though, and this is also important to note, he's still got troops hanging back. Joe is not just sitting back there, he's not just panicking. He's taking very calmly, rationally, dealing with the other troops here. Perhaps Simon might be being a bit too much attention in the flak panzer, doing some damage back in the base. So there's a small chance he can do some serious damage to Simon here and grab back the field gun, which, interesting enough, Simon hasn't done anything with. Smoke, again, it seems, at least attempted smoke. Engineers, there we got veterans one, 14 kills from the flak panzer. And there we go, Panzer 4 arrives now to support Simon and the Ghoul Stites, then Panzer Division. Gunners have pushed back, almost wiped again. We got Pioneers there, not in a good state either. Field gun ready, there's protecting. There we go. Joe makes off with it. And we got the Engineers wiped, flame for a drop. This is getting very critical. Another smoke grenade. Joe is basically just trying to think to buy himself time here. He might be banking everything here on a KB1 tank to save the day. And in that sense, you know. That could actually have a chance since he's only got a flak panzer and a panzer 4 to deal with it. So if you handle his cards correctly, that could work, but it's going to take some time and he's going to take some bleeding until then. Severe bleeding. At this point, he might as well call Simon a medieval doctor. But there you go, almost 52 then, the flak panzer increasing his lethality. Field can hear stopped by Gunnadiz with that machine gun, Gunnadiz flanking in. Still take territory, also in this case, stopped by the panzer 4, sniper fire as well, joining in, cutting apart the brave Russian shoulders as they stand and die on the fields. There we go, Flak Panther getting up, there we go, another hit from the field gun, down to half health, down to half health. 
Fear Gunner sets it cleared out. And Yunisa could get the sniper. Oh, no, stand shot, annihilated. No, and Yunisa left for Jove. Black Panther there, almost Veteran 2. And there we go. 27 kills, Veteran 2. That thing has wreaked absolute havoc on Jove. But he's finally able to call in some armor. A K1 heavy tank has been deployed from a nearby heavy tank battalion to try and save the day. And to tank grenade there, penetrate with filter damage the engine. K1 moving up. Black Panther there's game, we got a damage engine, the Panther needs to get away, needs to get away. But no, what he's doing, he's sending his king about, he's basically realised he's probably not going to get out of there, so he's basically doing what he can to ensure that Joe can't get the field gun, allowing at least the veteran to do Black Panther to escape there. A heroic decision there, the field gun still ends up being recruited despite his best attempt at crossing the unit, they've got another unit, the wipe, and we got Joe down to field gun, country score, shock trooper, KV1 versus three gun, these pioneers, snub MD42 and the veteran 2 Black Panther. Absolutely insane. Simon still has not chosen a doctor. He's got plenty of munitions. I don't think he's laid down a single mine though. But Job is definitely at the end of a tether right here. K1 rolls forward. He's going to try and get the Flak Panther, which is blitzkrieging due to a bark. Bark that has been fixed. Push, Dieter! Push! I don't think what this is what blitzkrieg means! I don't care! He's almost got it! KV-1 misses though, KV-1 misses! And we got elite troops! Pop Panzer Detention, smoke drop! Joe does not pursue, gonna need his man to damage the engine with the Panzer Fox and the Flak Panzer escapes! What madness! What joyful madness! Pack 40 there on the way for Simon! Even as we see this, we got chopped him against MD-42 which is pointed in the very most wrong up directions! Shock troops attack from the south, their pv 40 40s blasting away! But the K1 there tries to escape there. And even then though I think there were some K1s left in 1944-45 that had been replaced by the IS-2s so or at least KV-85 was basically a KV tank with a chariot sort of more suited for the 85mm gun same as the T-3045. Pull it back the one there. Sniper! Oh! Careful with the sniper! The pack gun is ready for orders. Holy hell! Simon is bleeding out here, and we got more troops being out. We got conscripts, fresh engineers to sort of help repair that KV-1. Two kills. Gonna this there, getting smoked out. Good use of smoke, really great use of smoke here by Joe this fight. And they're gonna need a quick to fall back there. And this time here for this, for the mid-game analysis, current situation is both of them all the same population. Victory point wise, slight advance there for Simon. He's also got most of the territory. Joe's a bit on the back foot. He's certainly suffered some losses, but the K1 is sort of main to get back there. Trounced Simon a bit, also caught him here with some precision. Of course, the fighting he's sort of done up until the point, you know, has sped out Simon a bit, ensuring that Simon didn't quite have a strong dominance as he otherwise could have. So, some very sharp fighting there from Joe so far. But of course, he's not out of the woods. Yet, not by a long shot. In part because, I mean, his forces are still rather low in some senses. Also because he's fighting a German player who's still got a Vecchi 2 flak panzer, which could still tear apart a lot of infantry. There's also the potential for more armor. But of course, also, as we know, Simon has gone for elite troops, which means there's ever the potential for a Tiger Ace to arrive and cause some troubles as well here for poor Jove. So there's sort of a lot of swords of Damocles hanging above his head here. And even then, of course, some might really need needed. I mean, a quick stoop, for example, I think could do all right, you know, deal with the KV-1's thick front armor that way. Otherwise, so some though, should be a bit more careful with his troops. He should coordinate them a bit better. I think some pants are going to do this, or maybe a half-track thrown on top would do him good. Maybe some flame for a half-track, and that way, you know, try and hunt down the separate infantry elements, I think would work quite, quite well there for... Simon. Otherwise, I mean, mines and such could also be quite beneficial. But beyond that, you know, try not to lose as much of reason sort of the bigger headaches there for Simon. Otherwise, you know, keep up the aggression, keep up the play here. And for Joe, of course, I mean, you know, mechanized armor company might be necessary getting issues in six or at least initially five. That's sort of the other things. More infantry will be needed for us. Grab the flamethrower, grab the mortar, get it back in a fight and sort of try to push back Simon to as much damage as you can, since that again seems to be sort of the slight pick up the sort of appears here with someone is the unit preservation and that's really I think one of the better chances here for Joe to get back in the fight. A B4 could also be potentially an option there to sort of deal with maybe some support rooms that Simon might still have around there. But let's return to this rather interesting fight. K1 those thing repairs. 
rather heavily while my tank at least it was by the start of the war which actually gave the Germans quite a lot of problems doing Operation Barbarossa and f was one of the sort of reasons they basically had to upgun their stuff because the K1s gave them so much trouble. Force having grabbed, we got a Panzer on the way here for Simon. Another Panzer come back. No Sturmgeschütz though, nothing that might, you know, say he have a better chance of penetrating the frontal armor of the K1 on a more mobile basis. Basically, I mean, he's sort of really relying on the Pack 42 with this end. He could be caught here. He could be caught. K1 moving in there. Gain switch is one another kill, but there you go. Panzer Faust and Pack 40. Not quite in the same order, though he's showing that K1 does not get a damaged engine. Black Panther being rushed forward here. Things are heating up. We got Shockers rushing this. Oh, there's an MD4 moving up there. We got minor skirmishing on the left flank. And it is there being pushed back by Kansas. We could see another one there against Simon. Really heavy loss for the Grenadiers. There you go. Shock troops under fire there from the MD4 and the Black Panzer. Black Panther just raking up those kills. And there you go. He lost another Grenadier squad. No, no, it's still there. So, oh, oh, it's dead now, anyways, and the lap machine gun was dropped. So it's just basically down to one infantry squad here, Mr. Simon. Things are swinging wildly back and forth here. There you go, making a run for the lap machine gun, flame flows opening up there. Flat hands about to up as well here, 29 kills. Comes to the bit bunched up there, cover shatters, high close, and there you go, utterly annihilated, murdered in this storm of fire and shrapnel. They stood no chance. Going for the port there. And we got a second K1 there around for Job. No take up. He's just at the moment sort of uh, going for the K1 since so he's the better sort of option here for dealing with the medium armor being pushed out here by Simon. Pack 40 there getting a good hit on the K1. Panzer looks to be flanking in here. Good, good, good. Figuring they could be dealt with that way. Nice thinking there from Simon, not just charging straight into the village centre, but actually trying to you know, get in on the edges and sort of surprise some units. In this case, the field gun. Can he though get off a good hit? Can he? Almost. Black Panther moving in. Might want. Oh, hits a mine though. Hits a mine. But almost. Almost. There we go. Field gun crew annihilated. But there we go. K1 striking in, taking advantage of the chaos here. The separation of the units. Black Panther with the damage engine. Half health. K1 taking the damage. The Black Panther Panther four, pulling back. Pack 40 can't support properly. There we go. The one K1 takes it, but the shot bounces. If only he had a Stug right here, he might have a decent chance, but there you go, Pan 4 getting behind. Black Panther though, popping smoke, but it might not be enough. There we go, that draws the attention away from the Black Panther though, focusing down the Panther 4. Now the K1 moves in there. Target weak point is an option here for the Pack 40, or is it, or is it? Oh dear, K1 gets in the smoke, ensuring the Pack 40 can't hit it. And now the Black Panther's knocked out as well. Job taking excellent usage of the smoke, even the one he did. His opponent deploys and turns us against Simon. And now the MG42 is in trouble. Good lord. What Simon going to do next? He's really going to just going to aim in the tight range and hope that saves the day. Almost got the pack 40, the pack 40 almost ready too. Got more engineers there on the way to up repairs and the lags there for. Joe, who continues, there we go, heat round loaded up. Oh no, he moved it, he moved it, or something went wrong. Either way though, munitions wasted. Panzer gonna be almost annihilated there, but the K1 just tearing apart those fascists. Absolutely outstanding fight here. Some tense fighting all the way. And despite Simon, you're mounting an overwhelming advantage early on. Joe rather punished him quite hard for it, and now it seems to be the answer, you know, holding all the cards. But of course, Simon still has one ace up his sleeve. No pardons for the pun. And he makes off with the pack 40 right under Simon's nose. The severe lack of infantry is really hurting Simon. Of course, if he's planning for the Tigris, he can't afford to replace it. Absolutely insane. There you go, Joe pulling back his forces. He must, of course, at this point be suspecting a Tiger. This is very much a possibility there from Simon's arsenals. Troops are basically standing about, aware that no reinforcements will be forthcoming anytime soon to their units. 
And he said all resources will be pulled together for the ace. And with that, Simon in a desperate gambit flings open the gates of hell and summon up the tiger ace in the hopes that will save him. With the Faustian resource back to his mate. Shocks with their getting suppressed. Smoke grenade there nicely popped. Field gun there recruits. We got one pack 41 field gun, 2k1 to hit sort of challenge. The tiger ace there called forth by Simon. Almost got the shocks within one devastating hit there from the ace. Almost wiped there, almost. But Mikhail looks like he might escape here. A horrible fake. At the end of an 88mm gun. Shot but missed again. The tiger ace rushes forwards, charges through the empty. Village center. K1 they're pulling back. Hits a building instead, shattering the nice portion of the far side. Because it is by the way forgotten in the far side there. Not good there for Simon. And there you go. Anti tank guns opening up. Plinking away at the front line of the ace force get to pull back. Contra's looking to try and sneak up there with an anti tank grenade hook to damage the engine. Forcing hang about. Simon could consider now supporting the Tiger Ace if he can sort of get up the resource. He basically just has needs to get a bit of manpower. It's still going to take him about two minutes. And then try and call up a stool for a bit of added anti tank there versus the KB1s. Now why should have thrown Three some extra infantry? Need to reinforce those Panzer guns, but again, he can't really afford He needs to get back territory. So he's actually sending out troops. They're not even fully reinforced, hoping that the Ace can sort of cover them. We got every concert there from Jove. Aerial reconnaissance. K1 for paying for an assault, it seems. Lining up, ready for an assault. Also, note it wasn't too uncommon in some cases, actually, you know, tanks with different uh, camouflage and what sort of actually fitting, and sometimes to switch over the camouflage for some, some cases. Tanks have been prepared for North Africa by the time North Africa was basically done with, rushed to the eastern front to get and then, and then basically rushed forwards in North Africa camouflage patterns. So, fun details there, fun details there. Now, will Joe try and go for another K1? He's going to go for something else, maybe a tech up. Could it be a B4, which, if it hits the bat, Tiger Race could definitely also deliver. Good support there for Job's forces, but Simon's is definitely on the back foot. He needs something to pull himself out of this mess. Of course, that guy under the stoop would be a rather effective choice, at least with the K1s. Perhaps they're caught. Devastating hit. Annihilates more than half the unit. Yet they still hang on. Before pulling back slightly. And to take it moving up, they just need to be careful. Holding the point there, almost ready to on that MD42 crew. That's been not used so aggressively as one could imagine there from Simon. No incendio arms either, which could have helped maybe with experience gain. And he's getting a flak punch. As far as you know, focusing on dealing with the infantry, the limited targets, to basically deal with the armor solely, it seems. Panther goes probably an upgrade with Panther Strix. Same way, sort of focus up. You can also done otherwise, get a scoop and maybe get some more Panther gun. It is one for reinforcing the others, allowing them to deal with the infantry alongside the ace. Bitching to 1 1, KB1 by the way. Fight intensifies here. We got MP42, the Southern Engineers from taking a few points. Trying to! Pioneer should move forward to try and help the Tigers keep it as much as prepared as he can. Meanwhile, Engineers flank the MP42 crew, saying that running back. And is it caught by shock troopers. Tiger is falling back. Black Panther running here. No real fighting here otherwise. K1 sort of dispersed throughout the village, ready to try and envelop any tigers. That might push a bit too far ahead there. Panther was hanging about there, ready to sort of deal with any attempt at sort of rushing into the eastern side of the village. And you got the shock tools basically hiding behind the building, home sort of lure in any aces to maybe sort of expose themselves to this area here where some anti tank does sort of do a lot of damage. You got the field gun there. Pack 40 further back there. Mortar has inch enough. Not been recruited there by Joe. Not been recruited. And there you go. Flak Panzer operating aggressively up in the north, trying to you know, secure the fuel. 
There we go, shocks were spotted here by the Tiger Ace. Machine gun fire and high cost shells that fly in the direction, most of the hit there by the, the enemy has oh, driven a wedge in our lines. Slightened incline there of the small island. Okay, wants to hang about. Joe a bit too cautious here, just sort of rushing at uh, Simon considering the current conditions. Which is understandable. We've got more gunners there riding for Simon. No, cancel them, cancel them. He's maybe thinking about Panzer Grenadiers instead. Or is it something else that has crossed his mind? Now under our control. You need fire support. Mines there. Lots of mines here. Looks like Joe, of course, now with the Tiger, he's sort of a foot. He's sort of trying to do his best sort of remove one of its advantage, of course, is his mobility. So by laying up mines, he can do a lot to sort of deal with that. Plus, of course, any other armor as well. He's getting a sniper, a sniper at this point! Not what I usually recommend, but it might work, it might work. Flak Panther the moving ahead here. Comes under fire, taking heavy damage here for the Flak Panther tank through the unit. Down to half health ready, almost annihilated there by the 37 mm High explosives also delivered by it. Ending many lives in moments. Is he going to try and maybe flank in through here on the area? What does he tend to he tend to head on? Sort in which case that would be a bit risky or roll up, but there he goes slowly creeping up there, engaging the conscripts. The sand mats not quite proof against all that fire. There we go, Snipe arrives. Almost got another white there, almost. And we got a B4 going up here for Joe. A B4 Howard, sir. He's going for the biggest gun he can get in the game. And go KV up, takes a little hit there from the Tiger Age. Black Panther hits in return. Field gun. And there he goes, stunning the K1 there, stunning it. Almost got it, we got a pack 40 here, ready. There we go, veterans with one target point now available for the... Here we go, he might stun it, he might stun it, and... Nope. Apparently something went wrong there. Before the... Hits the flak panzer, pops the crew inside it, leaving the insights coated in a fine red mist. And there's only the ace left here. Flak panzer dealt with. Almost ready to find another target weak point and it's hope for the best there. Sniper sneaking up, hoping for a better fate than his predecessor. But actually getting caught here by the Russian gun crew. K1 moving up as well, here's now we need to retreat, retreat. K1 moving up there, shot missed. Stunning the K1 there, allowing the snow to escape. And there we go, another target weak point, another heat round there delivered from the pack 40. And there we go, stuns the Tiger Race, stuns it, allowing the K1 here to escape. In the nick of time, at the same time, the Tiger Race are going to have to pull back there due to the presence of the Veti 2 pack 40. Or is Simon going to push it? No, no. Ah, oh, what are you doing, Simon? Nine. There you go, quickly pulled back there, his Tiger Ace heavily damaged, he's only got one Pioneer Squad to repair it by the way. So they are eventually two returning help, track forward there, cleared up by some cheeky gunners, there you go. B4 shatters a nearby house and some stones. Cut off there, going for denying the fuel there to summon further on, of course the Tiger Ace is barely getting any fuel in the first place, so it has less of an effect there on Simon. Both KB2s, or K1s, Veteran T2. Field gun, Veteran T2. B4 halfway to Veteran T1. Aggressively so. Crossing in the Tiger AC, still not fully repaired. Going after the shock troopers. Ach nein! Watch out, some water head! Ach Tom! And straight into both mines! Tag race kaput! Simon clearly had not anticipated that move from Joe and his heroic crew paid the ultimate price in service of the fatherland. At this point, Joe's pretty much got it all. And thanks to the Tiger Age, of course, he doesn't quite have the fuel resources to come up with anything, sort of turn things around now. Joe, on the other hand, has got a large armor advantage, B4s, fuel guns, infantry, and all that. And there we go. Game over. One hell of a fight. One hell of a comeback from Joe. 
Despite, you know, being at the very brink of defeat there with a flak punch attack for his units, wrecking buildings and whatnot inside his very own base. The K1's partly turned around there. Simon clearly not expecting it. Simon, interestingly enough, never getting the Stoog, which would probably be a better counter than the Panzer IV to deal with it. Now, that one really surprised me there from Simon. I think that would have been the old choice there. Obviously, Voss is a bit slow, but there were unit press times, so there's only one way that Joe sort of got back in the fight, showing that Simon didn't build up too much of an advantage. That Simon, or Joe, really could sort of, you know, crawl his way back from. But really, nice combat there from Joe. And the Tiger Ace really didn't uh, stop him either. I mean, in this case, Joe just was ice cold to all of Simon's tricks. Machine gun bunker holding up the car fight. No problem. Smoke it. Flank it. Deal with it. Flat pounds in your base. Keep it occupied, deal with the rest of the units elsewhere, Keep grab up a field gun, then call in the K1 as soon as he can, deal with that way. I mean, absolutely stone cold play there from Joe, absolutely solid. Nerves of steel, most commendable, and certainly Simon played well as well, but there are just some slight off decisions that I think that really no hurt him. I also think you've gone quicker, 4 2 3, for example, or maybe added in some pantomimes in there somewhere, I don't know. Either way though, well played by both sides, an absolutely sterling play there by Jove. Most commendable, so I think there's a lot there to learn from from players who sort of wonder what to do in certain situations sometimes. It's just a matter of keeping your head cool and sort of focusing on what you can do while, you know, delaying other things and you can deal with them, which was basically what happened in this case. He just dealt with the infantry and such that was hanging about here in the centre while sort of delaying the flak pounds in his base until he could deal with it. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you had some fun for this last match here before the new patch is out. At least, you know, I can get it out, you know, in time. It's sort of a bit tricky, sort of getting all the stuff fit together. And if you did, you know, feel free to subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. And if you feel like supporting the Public Undercast, consider donating. Donations are always most welcome. And sort of allow me to do this. So, thank you all, and see you all tomorrow. Bye!